and welcome to AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying our channel, hit the subscribe button and the like button down below as we're always releasing new content. Enjoy! Hey everyone, welcome back. Fred here, AF Math and Engineering, and welcome to another SAFE video. Uh, so this video is going to be on SAFE 2016, and particularly it's going to be a video on punching shear. So just to give you a quick um, overview of what this video is going to be on, we're going to investigate how to check punching shear ratios under uh, columns in SAFE, or you know, if we have a column above or below. Uh, we're going to check if they're punching or not according to the code. And I'm going to show you how SAFE designs for that. And then we're going to talk, you know, a little bit about some theory and some limitations of SAFE and, uh, you know, what personally I do when I'm designing uh, in practice. So let's go ahead and let's get started. You know, if you haven't watched uh, our first video, I suggest you go back. I'll put, uh, I'll put it in the description down below. But we did do some basics. We covered some basics in that video that I'm not going to be covering again. So, you know, if we skim over something, that's probably because we covered it in the other video. Anyway, so let's get started. So punching shear. Oh, also, by the way, we did do a video on punching shear and how to do it by hand. It's best you do know the theory behind it before you do it on the computer. So check out that video. It's in the description down below. So, okay, Safe 2016. Uh, we've loaded it up and um, I've already opened a file using a past model file. I used the Canadian code 2014, uh, the concrete code and we're into our model. So first, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of make like a random slab with some columns on it. We're gonna put some loads on it, and then uh, I'm gonna show you how to check for punching shear. So let's get started. Let's use a 400 slab. Let's make kind of like a nine by nine bay. Now, I want to choose something that's not too crazy that we can't reinforce it, um, that where the stress is just too high that it doesn't even allow us. So I think nine by nine should be good. Let's put some columns below. So let's put a corner column. So when we have punching shear, we have three different conditions, at least in the Canadian code we do. We have a, a corner column, an edge column, and an interior column. Edge column is usually worse. The unbalanced moment is worse in both X and Y. Edge is worse than interior, but better than corner. Let's place an edge column here. And Let's put a column above as well, because columns above and columns below can experience punching shear. Okay, great. Okay, so now we have our model here. As you can see, we have our 3D model. We have our column above, and then we have our columns below. So let's, um, let's put some loads on here so that we can actually evaluate the punching shear. Uh, let's go ahead and let's put, let's say, 2,000 kilonewton dead on this column. And let's go ahead and let's put maybe 300 live. I don't know. Uh, I'm just kind of making it up. Also, what we can do is we can um, let's do, let's actually go back. What we can do is uh, we have this size of load for punching shear, and we can just input our dimensions here, and we can tell safe what the uh, what the size of the load is essentially. In this case, we don't really need to do that because we're applying it to a column. It's going to evaluate it based on the column. But for example, if you just put a, a load somewhere and you didn't have a column there, then you would need to input this. Perfect. Okay, so we have our load on our column above. Uh, let's go ahead and let's put a load on the slab. Let's put something high, but not too high. Uh, let's put 18 kPa dead and let's put, let's say 7.2 kPa live. That should be good to experience punching shear. Okay, so uh, we've kind of made a little slab, you know, I don't really care too much about the dimensions or anything like that. Uh, we have corner columns, edge columns, and an interior column that we can check punching shear on, so we can look at all three, and we put a uniform load. Now let's uh, do our meshing. Um, a good rule of thumb, uh, and this came actually directly from the CSI ploy that I spoke to, is that it's a, a good rule of thumb to use a mesh at least the, the thickness of your plate. So for example, here we have uh, a 400 slab, so we're gonna use at least 0.4. You can use less, it's just gonna take more computing power. When I have a small slab that I'm checking like this, I, I usually just do 0.1 or something like that, uh, something low, so I know I'm gonna get accurate results. Okay, and uh, one more thing that we can take a look at before we run this is we can look at our slab properties, okay? so. 
when uh, we defined our slab, we have a 40 MPA slab with uh, 400 thickness. We checked thick plate. Now thick plate takes into account shear deformation of the slab. A lot of people think, oh, if you, we just need to click this because it's thick, uh, you know, if we have a pickup slab or something like that. And that's not necessarily true. So this essentially takes into account shear deformation of the slab. When you unclick it, it doesn't take that into account. And this, depending on the ratio of the span to the depth, can really actually make a difference in your results in your slab. So it is recommended that you keep this on unless you want to ignore shear deformation for some reason. So anyway, so that's just something I wanted to point out. Let's go ahead and let's run this and let's um, let's see what we get. It's probably going to take, you know, a couple of seconds. This is not going to take long. And we're done. Great. Okay. So here we have our slab. That's already looking pretty high to me, but that's okay. Uh, we're just doing this to learn. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to display. And we're going to say, we're going to click show punching shear design. Okay, so we we'll show punching shear design here. And what we have, okay, we have these ratios. Now, when this ratio exceeds one, that means that the capacity or the, the shear force that, the factored shear force rather, that the column is uh, experiencing or around the column is experiencing in two-way shear has exceeded its capacity. And um, if you look in the video that we did before, the capacity is the minimum of those three VC equations from the code. And that's exactly how SAFE evaluates this. All right, so let's go ahead and let's right click on one of them and we'll see what kind of information we get. Okay, so we right click and we can uh, choose what to display. And we can also sh uh, choose our load patterns here. So this is 1.5 dead, and uh, 1.5 live, 1.25 dead. Um, and we can see that SAFE has recognized that it's an interior column. It's recognized that it's square. It gives us a lot of information here. Okay, so I didn't really do anything with the cover, but you know you should check all of this stuff. Make sure that it's correct when you're actually modeling. We have our shear perimeter. This is the perimeter around here, the critical perimeter. And uh, we, you know we have our uh, our moment, our unbalanced moment. We have our shear force. In this case, you can see the shear force is negative because the column is. Uh, coming down, so the, the reactive shear force is upwards, right? Uh, if we go ahead and we check these columns, the shear force is going to be positive, right? So let's go back to this one. Okay, so it's recognized that it's interior, it recognized that it's square, we have our design shear stress here, and we have our concrete stress. So we also have our punching shear ratio, so this is, you know, 0.77 over um, capacity, which is a lot. So um, now let's get into design. So now that we've recognized that these all need to be designed for punching shear, um, let's get safe to design them. Now, uh, one note uh, about this is that the code has limits based on you know what kind of punching shear re reinforcement we're going to use and whether or not we can actually use it. For example, for if we want to use rebar ties surrounding this column, there's a certain stress in the concrete that the code allows us to use rebar ties. If the stress in the concrete exceeds that, then we're not allowed to use it. Same with uh, stud rails. Stud rails have a higher stress limit in the concrete that we're allowed, but still there is a limit. So I have a feeling without even checking that these on the outside probably safe won't allow us, the code will not allow us to design these uh, for punching shear using reinforcement, which would mean either we would need to put drop panels here or maybe even thicken the slab, use a stronger grade concrete, something like that. I think it will allow us to use this. Maybe we'll, uh, you know, if it doesn't work, then we'll go back and we'll just lower the load and then we can reinforce these. But I'll show you first how to do it and then we'll, we'll see what results we get. So we're going to highlight all the columns that we want to design, okay? We're going to go to Design, Punch and Check Overwrites. And right down here where it says Reinforcement Allowed, you're going to go ahead and click Rebar Ties. So we can choose Stud Rails or Rebar Ties. Let's try Rebar Ties first. Put in your, uh, your yield, um, your FY. So your yield uh, stress of your steel, which is usually about 400, 413 or something like that for st standard rebar. Let's say we're going to reinforce with 15M rebar and we're going to space them at 100, just as an example, okay? Press OK. It's going to ask if we don't mind if the results are deleted. That's fine. Let's run it again. And now let's check and see what happens. So we're going to show punch and shear design. Interesting. So it hasn't allowed us to design this, but it's allowed us to design these with rebar ties. Um, that's kind of odd actually, but anyway, so um, safe can be <laughs> can be a little bit buggy sometimes, to be honest, when, when designing shear reinforcement like this, which is why I don't use it personally. Um, I will get, you know, 
this information from SAFE and I'll do it using a spreadsheet or I'll do it by hand. Um, but you know, this is, this is how you do it. Sometimes you get funny results. Like for example, the shear stress here is 3.3 MPA and over here it's only two, but it's not allowing us to reinforce this with rebar ties. So it says failed reinforcing, not helpful. So uh, one, you know, this is uh, actually a, a, a good example why sometimes you should, uh, you know, not use safe to design uh, shear reinforcement for punching shear. However, uh, since it's allowed us to do it for this, let's go ahead and let's take a look. So if we come over here, we right click and we come down to punching reinforcement design. So now what it's telling us is it's it wants us to provide seven sets, okay? and 26 bars per set at 100 millimeters. So that's quite a few. Seven sets means seven rows. So one row around the corner of the column is one set. And then it wants to do seven rows of columns, but it wants 26 legs of 15M per set, which in 400 millimeters we can't even fit. So you would need to play with that spacing. Maybe you need to use 20M rebar. You know, um, essentially all it's going to do is just, you know, take what you input and it's going to put it in. So safe's not the best for designing rebar ties, to be honest. Um, so that's that. Um, one more thing I actually would like to note about this, for example, is that this is a corner column, okay? So this is a corner column. And, you know, as we can see, the, uh, the unbalanced moment is really high and our perimeter is much smaller. Um, you know, usually we get worse results from a corner column. However, a lot of the times we have, you know, a thinner slab around here that SAFE may use to evaluate what position this is in, and we may choose to model that or not. So um, that can affect the position of the column, and it can also affect how we design our, our column. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, um, let's go ahead and let's try stud rails. Let's just show you how to do it. So we're going to uh, select everything. We're going to go to punching check overwrites. Now we're going to go to stud rails. Okay, so we're going to go to stud rails. Let's use the same information here. We're going to rerun it and let's see what we get. Cool. So now actually safe has allowed us to design all of these with stud rails because uh, the reason for this is that stud rails, stud rails have a higher stress limit in the code, what we're allowed to use. Now, it also, in the code, for rebar ties and for stud rails, there is a kind of a border around the column in which we need to extend shear reinforcement to. And it's a formula. It's based on F prime C and, you know, uh, phi C and all that stuff. And there's a factor, I think it's like 0.83 or something like that, that we need to multiply by. And let's let's just click on one of them and we'll take a look okay so um, for this corner column we're being told to uh, use 15 stu M studs uh, six rails and 19 studs per rail at spacing of 100 which means that it wants us to extend the stud rails 1.9 meters from the face of the column essentially now if we go ahead and we click on show slab stresses okay we're going to go to our load combination that we're designing for and um, what you can do here, okay, is you can, for minimum, you can put in the code limit for stress. So for example, let's say it's 0.87 MPA, I don't know. And for maximum, let's say 5 MPA. So we're going to come here, we're going to go to stresses, okay, top face, or we can check bottom as well. And we're going to go to S max V, okay, so the max shear, and we're going to apply. And what we can see is we have these stress concentrations, uh, the, the maximum shear stress around the column. And what's going to happen, okay, is that I believe it was this one that we clicked on, but regardless, um, safe is going to pretty much extend it to the code limit. And if you put the contour, uh, the, the minimum contour as your code limit, you'll see that where this contour starts essentially is how far safe is extending it. And it's, it's always the same. And it's a good way to check to see if safe is actually doing, you know, what you expect it to do. So that's, uh, that's a little trick that I use sometimes, uh, just to check that my results are correct. Um, now, one of the drawbacks as well with designing for stud rails in SAFE is that usually in the industry, stud rails come from a certain company. Uh, Decon is, is a popular one, but um, Decon specifically have you know certain types of products 
that you know they supply. For example, they may have a certain type of stud, the certain thickness of the stud rail, and you know a certain width and how many studs are in per rail. So if you go ahead and you just specify whatever safe is telling you, you know those stud rails may not even exist um, when you go to actually or when the developer goes to actually purchase them. So you know once again. This isn't the best thing to use for stud rails, in my opinion, unless they're going to like weld them themselves on site. Um, stud rail companies have good software that you can use to design uh, this, given the forces that you use from safe. So once again, an option is you can come here, you can take these forces and these moments, and you can put it into a stud rail company software and get, uh, you know, exactly a product that exists. Um, so you're not having to do things twice or figuring out that, you know, those stud rails don't exist or whatever. Okay, so, you know, that's that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, I don't really have much else to go over, I don't think. Um, I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any questions about punching shear, you want to see anything on safe specifically, any topics, uh, or any questions about this video or anything I said, just comment down below, you know, leave this video a like, give it a give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button, you know, because we're going to be coming out with a lot more content just like this. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.